In 2009, I was given a birthday gift by one of the families here at Little Creek. It is a daily devotional reading book. And I have been using this devotional book again this year as part of my communication with the Lord. Several weeks ago, I opened the book, and I had not read the inscription for quite a while. But when I read it, God's Spirit impressed me that I needed to use this inscription for today. 2009, Pastor Dan, you have been a positive influence on our family. Happy birthday. And then each of the four members of that family signed their names. This is a treasure. Not just because it was a gift given to me. Not just because I have used it in my daily devotions for two years now, in 2010 and Again, in 2012, probably in 2014, I'll use it again. The Lord has it come. But the words, you have been a positive influence on our family, have been a challenge to me to be as good of a pastor as I can to the grace of Jesus Christ. You may be wondering, who gave me that gift? Well, one of the members of that family last week had the closing prayer after the Christmas presentation by our young people. And those of you that were here remember that he came to the front and said, if Pastor Dan was here, he would say, hallelujah. And you did. And when I was standing in the vestibule, after most of the people had left, one of the other members of our church fellowship, Marvin, came up to me and said, Pastor, you're having a positive influence on our young people. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Brett, for that book. God's Spirit is calling each of us to be a person of positive influence for the new year. A person of positive influence so not that we will draw attention to ourselves, but a positive influence so that we will draw attention to our Christ. One of my favorite writers penned much on the subject of influence, and I would encourage you to do some research in her writings. And I want to share just a short paragraph with you from a work titled Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 654. Every person is exerting an influence upon the lives of others. We must be either as a light to brighten and cheer their path, or as a desolating tempest to destroy. We're either leading our associates upward to happiness and immortal life, or downward to sorrow and eternal ruin. However contracted may be one sphere of influence, It is exerted either for good or for evil. One man upon his deathbed exclaimed, Gather up my influence and bury it with me. Could this be done? No, no. Like the thistle seed, it had been born everywhere and had taken root and would yield an abundant harvest. You and I, are exerting an influence. The question is, 
is the influence positive or is the influence negative? As this year is coming to a close and we approach the threshold of crossing over into a new year, I am challenging myself and I am challenging you to ask the question, what kind of person does it take to make a positive impact? What kind of person does it take to have a positive influence in the lives of those that we shall meet in the upcoming year, whether at church, at work, at home, or at school. Anywhere and everywhere our journey in the new year may take us. There's very little that can be done about the past year that is ending. Our words, our expressions, our actions, They're all done deals. But there is much that you and I can do about the upcoming year. The Bible preserves many records of worthy examples, role models of what kind of person makes a positive influence. And today we're going to zoom in on one of those examples. And notice a few traits that contributed to him being a positive influence. His name is Daniel. And as we do so, we're going to allow the Bible to answer this question. What does a person of godly influence look like? You ever thought about that? We're going to discuss three traits, and these are not in sequence of importance, but simply because something has to be first, something has to be second, and something has to be third. First trait that we notice from Daniel, a person of godly positive influence looks like a person of integrity. Listen closely to the words in Daniel chapter 1 in verse number 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Will you agree with me that that is an aspiration of integrity? You see, a person of integrity is distinctly different from any other kind of individual. Because a person of integrity always functions with the understanding that who, and follow me very closely, who he or she is, is much more important than what he or she does. Because who you and I are really determines what you and I do. And so the person of integrity understands that concept in mind and in heart. I'm convicted in my intellect and I'm convinced in my emotions that being a child of Father God ought to prompt us to act like God's child. I can remember telling Salome and Shalimar on more than one occasion when they were growing up and they were going out to be with their friends. Salome, Shalimar, Remember who your daddy is. Remember who your mother is. Remember whose child you are. That is very important because only as we understand that in mind and in heart will we understand 
that a person of integrity will always pass the test of close investigation and scrutiny. It doesn't matter how powerful the microscope or telescope is we are placed under. If we are a person of integrity, we will always pass the test. Look at Daniel chapter 6 and verse number 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Daniel was a man of integrity. And when he was put under the microscope of analyzation, they could find no fault, no error in him. You see, with Daniel, integrity was not an option he practiced just to be different. Integrity was his lifestyle from morning until night. From night until morning, Daniel was consistent. It was his lifestyle. And this lifestyle of integrity contributed to Daniel being a man, a person of godly, positive influence. Second trait, a person of godly, positive influence looks like a person of prayer. Daniel was keenly aware that his need was not partial in scope. Daniel was keenly aware that his need was total in scope. Now, what do I mean by that? Very simply this. Although Daniel was an extremely gifted and talented individual, his prayer life gave evidence that he accepted that despite his many gifts and many talents, he was a dependent person. He was dependent upon God. Someone years ago either wrote or said these words, that the Christian life is not difficult, the Christian life is impossible. And the only way that the Christian life can be lived successfully and effectively is as we receive a supernatural infusion of God's power. And the only way we receive a supernatural infusion of God's power is as we spend time in fervent, effectual prayer. As we pray, we will be effective. And this resounds the principle that Paul loudly enunciated in these words. I want to read from two passages. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, and Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. Listen closely. I can do all things how? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Does that sound like Paul was dependent upon Jesus? Absolutely. And you can insert your name and I can insert my name there. Danny Gerard can do all things only through Christ who strengthens me. And then in Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, we are not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors. How? We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You and I must be dependent upon God. Because as I said just a few moments ago, the life of a Christian is not difficult, it is impossible. 
But what is impossible with us is possible as we pray and have God infuse us with supernatural power to be more than overcomers. Repeatedly, over and over and over again, we see Daniel on his knees. Look at Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, now let me pause there just a moment and refresh your memory. There had been a, a, uh, a getting together of some of the leaders of the nation, and, and they came to the king and said, King, we want you to sign this decree that, that no one is to pray, no one is to beseech anyone except you. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Now, what does that tell me? It tells me that Daniel did not wait until there was trouble to pray. He prayed as he had been praying before when trouble came on the scene. And realizing his need, understanding his dependence upon God, Daniel prayed. Look at Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 and 4. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God. You see, with Daniel, prayer was not something he did just during a time of crisis. Prayer was his lifestyle. And this lifestyle of prayer contributed to Daniel being a person of godly influence for his generation. Third trait. A person of godly positive influence looks like a person of faith. One of the many outstanding lessons communicated to Daniel that became a primary focus in his life and must be a primary focus in your life and in my life if we are going to manifest being a godly, positive person of influence is found in Daniel chapter 11 and verse number 32. Listen closely. But the people, and underscore these words, but the people that do know their God shall be strong. But the people that know their God shall do exploits. Is there anybody else here besides me that wants to be strong? Is there anybody else here besides me that wants to do exploits? God says we can if we know God. He that comes to God must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. There's only one way you and I can prove the existence of God, and that is by faith. By faith. By faith. And as we by faith know God, Things happen in our lives, and the influence filters into the lives of others. You see, Daniel took God seriously. Who God is, and what God says. There is a principle by which Daniel functioned, and each of us must aspire to the same principle. The principle is this, the size of our God 
determines the size of our faith. I want to repeat that. The size of our God determines the size of our faith. Tell me the size of your God, and I will tell you the size of your faith. If I reveal to you the size of my God, I will be making a revelation to you of the size of my faith. We see Daniel. We see his faith when he asked permission to be fed only vegetables to eat and water to drink instead of meat and wine from the king's table. That took faith. Faith that he would not wither and dry up, but faith that resisting eating the meat and drinking the wine, but instead eating vegetables and drinking water would make him fairer than any of the others. That took faith. We see Daniel's faith when he was told that that all the wise men of Babylon were going to be killed because they could not interpret the dream of the king. And Daniel, by faith, boldly stepped forward and said, King, there is a God in heaven who reveals the mysteries unto mankind. That took faith. You see, Daniel took God seriously. And God, in Daniel's mind and in Daniel's heart, was a big God. And the size of Daniel's God influenced the size of his faith. Now the question I've been asking myself and the question I ask you today is this. Can we be the same kind of person of faith, as was Daniel. I believe we can. Because my Bible says God is the same today as He was yesterday, and He'll be the same tomorrow as He is today. Case in point, Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I want you to see them, and I want you to hear them, as they're facing the flames of the fiery furnace, and they speak these words of faith to the king. It's found in Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. By faith, they not only face those flames, but they walk into that fiery furnace knowing that there was a fourth man, Jesus, who was going to be with them. And not only did they come out of that fiery furnace, but the Bible says there wasn't even the smell of smoke on their garments. What a faith! You see, with Daniel, faith was not something he exercised just to get out of trouble. Faith was a lifestyle. And that lifestyle of faith contributed to Daniel's being a person of positive, godly influence. And I believe with all of my mind and I believe with all of my heart that God, just as He called Daniel to be a person of godly, positive influence for His generation, is calling you. And He's calling me to be a person of godly, positive influence for our generation. I don't know if I will die before Jesus returns, 
But if I do, and I've already put in a request to be cremated, but I hope somebody puts up a little sign at my memorial service, he was a man of integrity. Didn't matter if you saw him at church or if you saw him in the mall, he was the same. I hope on that little sign somebody puts up, he was a man of prayer. I hope somebody puts up, he was a man of faith. You see, God's calling us to be a person of integrity. God's calling us to be a person of prayer. And God's calling us to be a person of faith. You and I are exerting an influence. I want to be that kind of person. I want to be the kind of person that not only Jabe, as he expressed earlier, but I want to be the kind of person that our young people can look at and point and say, that's my pastor. And I want to be able to say to this church, even as Paul said to the church, be you followers of me as I am a follower of Christ. Not to draw attention to myself, but to draw attention to the one who makes it all possible. But I can only be a person of influence, and you can only be a person of influence, as we depend solely upon Jesus. Already as BJ, and I appreciate you bringing emphasis to that BJ about resolutions. Already many resolutions have been made, and in the time remaining in this year, many more resolutions are going to be made. And as we join the ranks of those who have and are and will make resolutions, I want to challenge us to collectively and individually resound with inner conviction and purpose the words of this old hymn. It's not in our hymnal. So I asked George to bring me the book and I copied the words and I want to share them with you. It's entitled... I am resolved. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one. He is the just one. He hath the words of life. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth. He is the living way. I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I am resolved, and who will go with me? Come, friends, without delay. Taught by the Bible, led by the Spirit, we'll walk the heavenly way. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Thee. A person of godly, positive influence is God's desire for you and for me. Father God, we thank you for the greatest of all influences. Thank you for Jesus. And Jesus, it's so easy for us to claim to be a Christian and not even realize that the very word Christian means to be Christ-like, to be like you. So Father, as we make an exit from this year and cross the threshold into another year, may we, by your grace, determine and resolve to be a person 
of integrity. A person of prayer, a person of faith. Father, you know my weaknesses, my insufficiencies, and so I'm offering myself at this very moment as a candidate for this to take place in my life. Because this prayer I pray, and praises for victories I give, in Christ's name, 